series off with a message called A Deeper Love. And I want to say to you this, this morning as a reminder that His love is only as real through us as it is real to us or in us. Can I say that again? His love is only as real through us as it is to us or in us. Amen? See, there's many believers that believe that we are supposed to love the world. We're supposed to love our enemies. We're supposed to love our families. We're supposed to love our workplace. But I don't believe there's as real an expression of love that there should be on the face of the earth. And one of the biggest reasons for that is because we really are not walking in, receiving, and being conduits of His love ourselves. His love is only as real through us as it is to us or in us. We spoke about a deeper love and how we need a deeper love. The next week we spoke about penetrating love and how God's love penetrates. We spoke from Ephesians chapter 3 and He says that we would be strengthened with might in the inner man by the Holy Spirit. Then verse 17 of Ephesians chapter 3 says, Being rooted and grounded in love. Why do we need to be rooted and grounded in love? Why do we need to have this continual experience and encounter with love? Because he says, then you'll be able to comprehend. You'll be able to seize. You're able to obtain that the, the width, the dimensions, the, the width, the length, the, the depth, the height of the love of God. And to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. He, he wants us to be strengthened in the inner man by the Holy Spirit so that we can grab a hold of, grasp, attain this measure of love that He has for us with all of its dimensions. He wants that because in verse 19 He says that you would know the love of Christ. Why? So that you may be filled with the fullness of God. It's so interesting in the scripture that He says He, wants, he actually wants me and you to be filled with the fullness of God of God. He doesn't want us just to have a, a minor experience, but he says that we would be filled with all the fullness of God, according to the power that works within us. So we, sp we spoke last week about a penetrating love. And the other scripture I, just, scripture I just want to mention from last week was Romans 8. Romans 8 and verse 37 is a scripture we all know. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Amen. Yet in all of these things, what are all of these things? We spoke about that last week. Tribulations, distress, persecutions, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. The second half of that verse says, through him who loved us. How are we more than conquerors? How do we experience? How do we live this life that, that puts us in a place where whatever we face, we can conquer it. And the answer is super clear from Scripture that it's through Him who loved us. He says, who can separate us from the love of Christ? None of these things. And then he says in, in verse 38, he says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor present things present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So we are victorious in His present love. We are victorious in His love now. Not His, not his historical love. His historical love gained the victory for us. But His present love manifests the victory in our lives. His present love manifests that change in our lives. And it's from this place that I want to speak to you this morning about unstoppable love. You know, love is personified in God as a, as a father, as our father. Nothing can overcome love. But love can overcome all things. And in love, we are more than conquerors. Amen? Amen? Yep. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 says, Love never fails. If you have just one scripture that you want to hold on to for your life, that's a good one. Love never fails. God's not going to fail you. We sang it this morning. Not for a moment was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. As we're singing it, 
I thought that, that I, I was thinking about it just because of what we've been ministering on. But the, we are not forsaken. He's given us that comforter. He's given us the Holy Spirit, the one who loves us, the one who, who loves us by comforting us and bringing us to a place of courage. But I, I thought about what we're singing. Not for a moment have I been forsaken. I'm not, I have not been orphaned. My father has, has adopted me. He has placed me in his family. And I have not been fors forsaken. Not for a moment have I been forsaken. We sang it this morning. The Lord is in this place. Which place is the Lord in? It's, he's in this place. That's why we can sing it. Amen? And he is in this place. But he's probably in this place because he's in this place. Amen? Otherwise, we're singing the wrong thing. Not for a moment have I been forsaken. The Lord is in this place. Oh, then I have to come back to this place. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, I feel forsaken. If I leave the place, I feel forsaken. Yes, that's right. Amen? Yeah. The Lord is in this place. He's in, he's in, put your hand on your, on your chest and your innermost beings. The Lord is in this place. He has not left us. He has not forsaken us. Turn with me to the book of 1 John. 1 John yeah. chapter 4. I want to speak to you this morning as we wrap up the series on unstoppable love. I want to speak to you about that unstoppable love. And 1 John chapter 4, we're going to read from verse 7. Who can tell me what the very first word says in that scripture? Beloved. Beloved. Mine, yeah, mine says exactly the same. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good, Jesse. That was rehearsed. <laughs> I want to just stop you right there in that word. That's a word that we're very familiar with, beloved. It means, it means he's speaking to the saints. It means he's speaking to the brethren. Yeah. But just break that word down even in our English. What does it say? Just split it up. Beloved. Beloved. I want to say to you it starts right there. Unstoppable love starts right there. Yeah. Be loved. If you are not loved then you're not going to get the rest of what this is saying. Amen? So he's talking about beloved. Be loved. Let us love one another. But you're not going to get to that second part if you don't get to that first word. Be loved. How does God want to love on you this day, today, this season? It's a very, very important question because you cannot carry on to the rest of this verse. If you don't understand or allow God to love on you. He wants to love on you. Have you seen people who don't want to be loved? Have you seen, have you seen people who don't want... You can resist love, but you can't stop it. Love is unstoppable. But you can resist it. He says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this is love, in this the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation of us for our sins. There he says again in verse eleven, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love. We also ought to love one another. Because of his love to and in you, he gives us what the Bible calls a ministry of reconciliation. Amen? He says, Be loved. Be loved. Let us love one another. Let us love one another. Second Corinthians chapter five, if you can turn it there in your Bibles with me. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse. 12 we're going to read for i do not commend ourselves again for we do not commend ourselves again to you but give you the opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart for if we are besides ourselves it is for god if we are out of our mind it is for you verse 14 says this 
For the love of Christ compels us. That sounds like unstoppable love. The love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he, and he died for all, that those who live should, no, should live no longer for themselves. That's us he's speaking to. Amen? We should not live any longer for ourselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Verse 16, and from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is Christ, in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18, now all things are of God who was reconciled to us himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That, that is, that God in Christ reconciled the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Then verse 20 and 21 says this, Now then we are ambassadors of Christ. Listen to this next phrase. Now we, you and I, we are ambassadors of Christ. The next phrase is this, as though God were pleading through us. I wonder if we walk around in the city and the expression of our lives could be summed up in those words. As if God was pleading through us. As if God was pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Why? All of that because... The love of God compelled him, compelled him. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He says that we should no longer live for ourselves. This is unstoppable love. The Father's love manifest in Jesus, pouring through him to the disciples and the earth, gushing through Peter and then John and then through Paul to the Gentiles. And that's why we're here. Amen? Yeah. Because of unstoppable love. The ministry of reconciliation. Paul received it and he ran with it. And wherever he went, the Holy Spirit started to tag people and say, Tag, you're in. You're now part of unstoppable love. You're part of you're part of being ambassador of, ambassadors of Christ. As though Christ were imploring. As though Christ were pleading through us. And imploring people on Christ's behalf to be reconciled. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a quick question. How's your ministry of reconciliation going? How's unstoppable love going for you? How's it going for me? I look at our city and I think God still has a few things that He wants to do. There's a few people on His heart this morning. I look at my family and I think... God, there's a few people that your heart's breaking for. Mm -hmm. I look at my friends and I think there's a few people, God, that your heart's breaking for. It's unstoppable love. We can resist it, but we can't stop it. The reason why you and I are here is because of unstoppable love. Love has been resisted in many ways and at many times, but it's never been stopped. Amen? Yeah. How many of you read of John, I think his name is John Chow, that recently got martyred on the island of the St. Malise, just off the coast of India? Did you read that? I read it in a secular news app. A guy who came, I believe, out of, out of YWAM, went to an unreached people group, and he knew that they were a violent people. And the nation of India has outlawed people going there. It's illegal to go there. And they've justified it with many things, many reasons. But this young man was compelled by the love of Christ. We know it because he said so, but we also know it because his family has said so afterwards. And he gave his life compelled by love. He sang worship songs as he approached them. He had been before 
had been shot with an arrow and his Bible saved his life. Wow. Hit his Bible in. And then he went again. Took with him gifts of love. <clears throat> took with him fish. And I believe it was a soccer ball. And he sailed onto an island. He, wrote, he, he had a kayak, I believe. And there he met Jesus. But love is unstoppable. It's hard to think about these things. But if we read the Bible, we can't get away from it. Yeah. If you just read the, the book of Acts and do a bit of research, you understand that love is unstoppable, but it can get resisted. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But God got to you and me, and He wants to get through you and me. Yes. His love, that's unstoppable. John chapter 13, verse 34 says this, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. I always look at, sometimes the little words are big words in the Bible. Look at that little word as. Becomes a big word for me in the scripture. I give you a new commandment I give to you. That you love one another as I have loved you. How do we love one another? As. We've got to love one another as. Love can have many expressions. Hollywood's got its own version of what it should look like. But that's not the love of God. That's not the kind of love that God's talking about. I want to tell you that a young man called John, who was 26, gave his life for Jesus just, I think it was about a month ago, understood how to love as, and he did. And probably for most of us, if not all of us in the room, we will never have that as a reality for us in terms of how he experienced the outworking of that love. But make no mistake, he has put you in a family and with friendships and in a workplace and in a city because he loves. Mm -hmm. Because he loved Calvary enough that he had sent you. He loved the world enough that he had sent Jesus. He loved your family enough that he had put you in your family. Amen? See, love, love sees opportunities to welcome the king and advance the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Religion sees what needs to be done before yeah. anything will change. That's right. Can I say that again? Religion sees what needs to be done before anything can change. Love sees opportunities to welcome the king and advance the kingdom. Mm -hmm. When we get touched by his love, when we, when we allow the Holy Spirit to pour out his love, Romans 5.5 5 says the Holy Spirit was given to pour out the love of the Father in our hearts, to gush out, to gush the love of the Father. When that, when that love gushes out on me, I start seeing opportunities to welcome Jesus and advance His kingdom. I start seeing opportunities to love. Because love causes you to, causes an awakening of the heart, causes you to draw from the tree of life and not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. John chapter 15 verse 12 says it this way. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Verse 13. Greater love is no, no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Verse 17 says these things I command you that you would love one another. 1 John 3 verse 16. I want to read just a few more scriptures here. And then we'll wrap up this morning. 1 John 3 16. By this we know love. Because he laid down his life for us. As we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Then just a few verses down in verse 18 he says. My little children. Let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Let us love in deed and in truth. 
Listen to this scripture. You know this scripture super well. But the end part of the scripture is incredibly relevant and important as we look at unstoppable love. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. I know I, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I love by faith in the Son of God. How many of you know that scripture? What's the next words? So we now, we live, I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Who loved me and gave himself for me. There is a heart that beats in you that wants to love someone and give it, give yourself for them. And it's not just for the ones that love you back. Amen? He says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. I've been crucified. Again, Romans 5, 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. Poured out to, to gush, to spill. You see, unlove, unstoppable love found a gushing home and a mission in someone like Mother Teresa. She just got so much, she hit so much of a gush of the love of God that it transformed the slums of Calcutta. Amen? Mm -hmm. Took her before presidents and prime ministers too. But it was the love of God. Mm -hmm. She said it this way, each time anyone comes in contact with us, they must become different and better people because of having met us. We must radiate God's love. See, unstoppable love has found a home in someone called Heidi Baker, who has transformed rural areas in Malawi and many, many, touched many, many other lives. She said it this way, it's not complicated. Just love the one in front of you. It's not complicated. Just love the one in front of you. She also said it this way. The only currency that will heal every culture is ceaseless love. It's unstoppable love. It's the love that can comfort us. The love that can supersede any wounding. The love that can minister more deeply than we could even fathom or understand or comprehend. The love that can touch the untouchable parts of us. The love of God that can gush out to such an extent that you cannot handle it and you cannot contain it. It's that love that He wants to be more real to you. That's been such a common thread and theme for us for the last little while and I want to, I want to Harp on it just a little bit more. But His love is only as real through you and me as it is to us and in us. You see, I can say the right words and it can mean nothing. Yeah. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is about. Right? We can be the best Christians on the face of the planet. We can have the right answer and right apologetics for everything. We can know the right compassionate wording to phrase at the right time. But if it's not real in you. You see, if somewhere, if somewhere I could not find God when my sister passed away. If when my sister passed away, I was not comforted by God. It just needs a little bit of comfort. Right? <laughs> But when my sister passed away, when I was in my 12th year of school, 
If I had not found God there and not experienced His love in that situation, it would be less real for me to comfort other people in similar situations. Are you with me? Yeah. There's situations that God's walking you through right now that He is wanting to gush His love on you. He's wanting to pour not just enough. He's wanting to pour it so that it spills out of you. He's wanting to pour it over you. In this world, we will have tribulations. We've spoken about this in the last several weeks. What are those for? Every one of those is an opportunity to receive His love. Yeah. Every tough thing you've ever gone through or are going through is an opportunity for you and I to receive His love in a way and a measure that will overflow, that will gush out onto other people, that will bring hope. That's why hope in God does not disappoint. Because there is something stronger than whatever is trying to disappoint. Amen? Amen. So everything we go to is labeled with an opportunity to receive God's love and turn it around. Yet in these, all these things, we are more than conquerors. Amen. It, it's, it's almost like the enemy can't win. Because whatever he throws at you, if you just turn the label around, the label of Whatever it is, overwhelming this. Whatever the tribulation, the challenge, the, the peril, the hurt, the nakedness, the famine, whatever it is, if you just turn the label around, it's labeled an invitation to God's love. It's labeled an invitation and an opportunity for God to turn it around in a way that is so excessively loving that it'll, it'll pour out and spill out on other people. It's almost like the enemy can't win. Whatever he throws at you, he's, he's just thrown it at the wrong person. Amen? Because if you understand God's heart, you know that God will turn that around. So it really doesn't matter what he throws at you. Love takes victims and turns us into victors. But not because we're so hardened and strong and because we learn to get tough and self-sustained. It's because we just hit the gusher of His love that overwhelmed whatever defeat, whatever confusion, whatever difficulty we faced. <coughs> Billy Graham, who walked with this unstoppable love in him, who was compelled by the love of Christ, said it this way the thing that kept Christ on the cross was love not the nail yeah. you see it's unconditional love in the sense that we don't have to do anything to fulfill any conditions but boy was it conditional Jesus had fulfilled many conditions for this love to be ours the good news is that he did. He fulfilled all of it. He did it all. And what he's made available is the very love of the Father. The Father wanted to make sure that we never lived a moment where we didn't have the love of the Father present. And so he sent the Holy Spirit to pour out the love of the Father into our hearts. Amen. You know why we so desperately need the Holy Spirit? Because the answer to how to love our neighbors, how to love as he loved, the answer to do that, the answer to how do I love someone, is not a cognitive answer that you can get the answer and have it. It's a moment by moment, situation by situation. Have you seen the same expression of love experienced differently before? Have you ever seen that? Sometimes you can try and hold someone and it's just the wrong timing or moment. And they will and if you do that and you force that on them, it'll push them away. Have you seen that? Yeah. There's other times, have you ever seen this? I've watched I've watched parents whose children are pushing them away and the parents have, have just held on a little bit tighter until that resistance broke 
and you see them. And they just fall into an experience of love. And they're loved by that parent. But how do you know if you're a parent whether you're supposed to hold on or give them space? Make no mistake, his love is unstoppable. But for you and I, we need the wisdom of heaven and the Holy Spirit to help us to love people. Because sometimes our expression of that unstoppable love, when we, when we draw from that tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's just giving the right answer. Have you ever heard, have you seen that one? Teenagers are classic. Don't just give me the right answer, right? They, they resist the right answer. What they're looking for is not knowledge. They're looking for something more. So they, they, it's, it's easy to resist. So why do we need the Holy Spirit so much? How, how is it that unstoppable love found a home in Mother Teresa and Heidi Baker and Billy Graham, like I've said, and many, 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 many others? How is it that his love was so successful, so fruitful through them? And I believe it's uh, twofold. Maybe one fall. Two fall, maybe one fall. <laughs> the first thing is that they experienced his love. Yes. And it was real in them. Yeah. And as real as it was in them, it's as real as it became through them. And the second, which is totally linked to that, is that they walked with the Holy Spirit on the inside of them. And when you walk with the Holy Spirit on the inside, the, the love of the Father can be poured out into my heart. And when I have the love of the Father pouring out in my heart, then I don't know what situation I'm going to come to and how I'm going to not have the wisdom to handle it. So I walk into John one day and he says, this is the thing I'm going through, the circumstance and situation I'm going through. And I don't have a cognitive answer for it. There's no Bible verse that says, John on the 22nd of December, 2018, this is the word of the Lord for you. There's no, there's, there's no scripture like that. So what I have to have is, I have to have that gusher gushing on the inside of me in such a real place that when there is a need, it can spill over and gush over into that person's heart. And I want to say to you that we need the Holy Spirit like never before. Not just so that He can comfort you and love on you. That is absolutely essential. But we need Him because our world needs Him. Amen? And to keep Him for ourselves is to not understand what unstoppable love is. And unstoppable love is looking for a home. And it's found a home in you. And in me. His love is not going to stop. The nature of His love is unstoppable. Yeah. He is unstoppable. Love never fails. He's not going to fail you. He's not going to let you down. And He wants to gush that reality so much into your heart that you come to a place where you gush into this world. Not the nice cognitive answer. Not the... Not the right apologetics. And there's nothing wrong with that. But he wants that to be accompanied by unstoppable love. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. We're going to close. And pray. <laughs> Just close your eyes and just allow him to love on you. Started out this morning and said, read that first verse in that first scripture that says, Be loved. I wonder if you don't want to just invite him to speak to you. Invite him to look at you. Scripture says 
that Jesus looked at someone and loved them. He wants you to experience the substance of his love, not the concept of his love, but the substance of his love. Just open your heart and be loved. Be loved. Just for a moment. And yes, God uses other people to love on us, but he wants to directly love on us. He wants to, he wants to help us. He wants us to be rooted. That's Ephesians that we spoke about last week. He wants to strengthen you in the inner man by the power of His Holy Spirit so that you can comprehend, so that you can comprehend, that you can attain and receive the full dimensions of His love. And for, for many of us in the room, we have greater dimensions of His love to receive. There is more to this gusha of love than just our salvation. There is more than just being a nice person. Yes. There is more than just being a good Christian. Yes. There is more to it than just being a good husband or a good wife or a good son or a good daughter. Mm -hmm. There is more to this love that he has. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be able to comprehend the dimensions of it. All of the dimensions of it, which is unending. Which means that there is more of the gusha that we will experience for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. From this day to the, for the rest of our lives, the Holy Spirit is within us to pour the love of the Father into us. So that anything you come across anytime, anywhere, with anyone, there is excess love to spill out. There is excess gushing through you. You might not always have the right answers in word, but you'll carry something more significant. You'll carry something that can change your situation. And as we, as we pray now, I wonder if I can pray that over you, that God would, would, with His unstoppable love, cause your heart to start to see the opportunities for that ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation is just an expression of the love of God. It's bringing in people afresh into the love of the Father. And He... he Romans 8 also says that the world is groaning in anticipation for the unveiling of the sons of God. It's groaning in anticipation for people who can gush His love. Father, I pray this morning for your sons and daughters here. I pray for these image bearers in front of me. I pray, God, that you'd strengthen them in the inner man by the power of the Holy Spirit, that they would be able to grasp, that they would be able to understand, that they would be able to comprehend. The love of Christ is the part of human knowledge, that they would comprehend all of the dimensions of your love. God, I pray that you would walk us into depth upon depth of encounter with you and your heart. Mm -hmm. I pray over this season that we would have eyes to see how our God wants to reconcile the world to himself. Mm -hmm. And that's why, Jesus, you were given. Mm -hmm. I pray that you touch our heart's eyes. Lord, to see those that know you reconcile to a deeper love in you and see those who don't know you come to a place where they can be loved for the first time. Because anything without you in it cannot be love. Because you are love. God, I pray. I pray, Father, that you would pour out your love on us, that you would gush it out on us. I pray that it would supersede all of what we even know. I pray, God, that it would go beyond. I pray in all of these things that we'd be more than conquerors through Him who loved us. And God, I pray that the reality of that would come to those around us. That in all that they go through, that they would become more than conquerors. Yes. 